Well, a new comprehensive report on malaria published by the World Health Organization says that new approaches are needed to tackle malaria after disruption caused by COVID-19 led to an additional 13 million infections and 63,000 deaths. The World Malaria Report indicates that annual malaria cases rose, albeit at a slow pace, from 245 million in 2020 to 247 million in 2021 during the pandemic, further affecting prevention, testing and treatment of the disease. In 2019, before COVID-19 emerged, malaria cases stood at 232 million. Professor Philip Njemanze of International Academy of Astronautics, a UNESCO body for space research, joins us now to discuss a breakthrough in malaria treatment research, which can eradicate 31% of global deaths recorded in Nigeria arising from malaria attacks. Professor, good to have you. Please tell us about this breakthrough. This is actually uh, timely because to discuss this because Nigeria has now signed the Artemis Accord uh, because we use space-based technologies. This was way back in 2015 uh, to study malaria, the endemic size of malaria, and we use satellite technology to identify the the areas where which we are the high areas of uh, disease prevalence. Uh, across Nigeria. We used Imo State as a model. Uh, at that time, I was working with NASA at, as a principal investigator at the Center for Health Applications of Aerospace Technologies at the Moffett Field uh, NASA facility. And it was very possible for us to identify these areas and study the seasonality of the malaria pan, uh, pa uh, pandemic, well, epidemic uh, in this case. So we now identified the peak moments. So it became possible for us for the first time to actually pinpoint days we can insert the effective drugs. The effective drugs are called base combinations. So these compounds uh, are the ones that are being used today by everybody uh, who suffers malaria. However, a new approach is now introduced that every uh, four times a year, every three months, a specific date, everybody in the Federal Republic of Nigeria will take the anti-malaria at the same time. So it's not that some people will take at different times. No, no but we will announce this uh, malarial base and then take these drugs at the same time. Once we do that, we will now drive away the parasites in blood. So even when the mosquito bites you, it does not have the malaria parasite. And with this, if we can do this over a two year period, we can actually er eradicate malaria from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And then of course, move on across Africa. So this is possible. And we see that going forward, this is the way to go in order to eradicate eradicate malaria because it's a vector uh, uh, um, born disease and the vector can also once you remove the parasite from the host organism with a human being then the vector when it bites somebody does not have the parasite in blood and this can be done by simultaneous administration of these uh, artemisinin based combinations uh, drugs this is indeed an incredible break breakthrough. And, uh, uh, you know, it's coming off of the backdrop of the fact that two weeks ago, Malawi uh, became the first country to uh, to roll out the malaria vaccine on a large scale. Now, can you tell us what the benefits of this particular strategy are uh, over the immunization, implementing a wide scale, ro a wide scale rollout, excuse me, of the malaria vaccine? Well, um, the malaria vaccine is still uh, in study and the results are not so encouraging in terms of uh, wide scale use. Um, but the atimicinin based compounds have demonstrated effectivity. So if we use the drugs, the uh, atimicinin based uh, compounds, we will achieve uh, clearance of malaria parasite in blood. We are not so confident of the um, effectiveness of the vaccine. And then, of course, 
the the possibility that we will achieve the targeted result with vaccines is as as at this time very doubtful so we believe that uh, going forward we should use the uh, artemisinin based compounds because they are highly effective you take it all the time you suffer malaria but the problem is when you take it and it clears the malaria parasite in your blood the next person close to you still has the parasite so the vector bites that person and transfers it back to you but if two people or people living together take it at the same time everybody is free of the of the parasite so even when you are bitten by a mosquito there is nothing to transmit so we believe going forward this is even going to be far more effective than any malaria, uh, malaria vaccine because it has already demonstrated great effectivity in use today in clinical practice this is indeed an exciting breakthrough and i really look forward to it but professor i'm also curious you know a few months ago we were we were told about the you know the latest mal um, mosquito species you know i believe that's the anopheles stephensi and we're told that it thrives in urban areas and that it does not respond to regular prevention methods when it comes to malaria i'm wondering if this breakthrough also incorporates this species yes i had it uh yeah, the, the, the issue is that the vector wouldn't matter and its mutation wouldn't matter because it's just a vehicle. It can bite the, the, the host, but when it bites the host, it can't transmit the, the parasite because the parasite is not there. Everybody around you is free of the parasite because you took the drug at the same time. So the, there is clearance of the parasite in blood. And this is why this is very, very, very exciting. And, and we, our investigators are looking at this with a lot of interest. Now, uh, I know one of the, uh, the pros of this particular solution is that it's homegrown. But what are some of the challenges of us being able to get our homegrown solutions applied? Because it seems, uh, you know, international or global recommendations are what our governments like to implement, uh, you know, and often our own homegrown solutions fall by the wayside. Are there any challenges in trying to, you know, see this passing to uh, the necessary offices and, uh, and desks that it needs to for us for it to become implemented on a national scale well you actually put your finger on the right issue there the the issue is that the international uh, uh solutions have failed they have failed woefully they have failed nigeria um the incidence and uh, uh of an um, mortality has even increased not even decreased so that these international solutions have not worked for nigeria and they probably going forward will not work and i think the correct way the world health organization was designed is that we should come up with the solutions and bring it to the international community but this top-down approach of taking what the world uh, uh, community has come uh, come up with and then bringing it here really doesn't work and we we know that statistics have shown that, that it doesn't work so i think it, there is there is need for a political push and uh, ho hopefully that we will have uh, going forward the, whatever the regime will be uh, in the future they will now start looking inward for in for homegrown solutions because we adapt the solutions to our conditions before we proffer them for use. Uh, the international uh, uh, solutions are just straight jackets. Uh, it, it does one fit all and it doesn't work in medicine or in any other thing actually. Very well said, Professor Philip Njimanze of International Academy of Astronautics, UNESCO Body for Space Research. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you for this breakthrough. Please do everything you need to do to make it a reality. Thank you for joining us.